All right, welcome back. My name is Scott, and we're here with Javen again. This is Guff Stuff Gaming Weekly. Today, we are going to be talking about virtual tabletop and in-person gaming, pros, cons, different systems, and whatnot. The world of tomorrow versus the world of yesterday. There you go. Exactly. Uh, of course, this is the... the uh, what is the word I'm looking for? The... Yeah, tomorrow versus today. Obviously, everybody's like, well, these chains, these systems will change the world, and you'll never... You know what? In my opinion, I'm just going to get this out of the way, all the tabletop gaming, the new systems, all they do is bring more people together because it's just like when people said video games and people will never play again. I think that hurt one generation. Literally, the generation, my generation. Generation X, I think. Maybe not that. Maybe it's my kids, you know? Whoever, whatever generation. Was that millennials? Yeah. Okay, so it hurt the millennials. He's a boomer. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 I'm Generation X. But, uh, yeah, I, I, like, it hurts the... I think that's all it hurt. But I think a lot of those people that are into that, like my kids, my kids that I have, they're, they're not necessarily junked out by this. So this is what kind of what we're getting into with virtual tabletop versus in-person. I think that's part of the discussion is a lot of people worried that, you know, these virtual tabletops and whatnot were going to affect the in-game play. What do you think? I think that each of them has their place, and they're both equally fun. I, I can agree. I don't have um, as much experience in it, but so I would agree. Just for my background, I've played thousands of hours of in-real-life D&D. Right. And I've played probably close to, between Discord and Roll20, I've probably played close to a thousand hours online. Right. Which is considerable amounts of time if you think about it. Yeah. Just do a little math. If you think about a four-hour session, you know. Now you're talking 250 days worth of... 250 days worth of sessions. Sessions. That's a lot of sessions. Mm-hmm. So the big thing I've come across with... I, my main format that I've used is Roll20.net. Yep. Um, shout out to those guys. They do an awesome, phenomenal job. They do. Um, if it wasn't for Roll20.net, I would have never been able to run several of the campaigns that I wanted to run. Um, it's, it's hard to find players that can commit to in-person playing. Um, so I guess I'm kind of going through the pros and cons here a little bit. Yeah, no, that's yeah, that's what we're here for. Um, so the, the, the main pros... Is that I can play with a guy from England if I want to. Right. Yeah, you don't have to be stuck with the waiting for the game store to open up or inviting your friends over. Mm-hmm. Consider your friends are all over the country now. The other thing, too, is like I don't have to lug around books. No. Nope. Because I can just have the PDFs on my computer. Right. right. Um, the character sheets are on the computer. You, DM can see all the character sheets. Right. So um, on Roll20... Do they buy the book? Well, I'll use Fifth Ed because it's a pretty popular system, but can I buy the books on Roll20? Yeah. Okay. And then the character, can I build a character on Roll20? Yeah. And then I can print that out if I want to? Yeah. Okay. I wasn't familiar with Roll20. I'm more familiar with Fantasy Grounds, so. Um, yeah, so specifically within Fifth <laughs> Edition, I still... I, Roll20, you can buy all the stuff, and then, like, so you can buy, like, a module. Right. And then you get all the pawns for the module, you get all the handouts. Okay. Like, they... they it's like having the physical module, except it just <coughs> breaks up all the pieces so that you can run. And like then you, they give you the, the pawns to use on their virtual tabletop. Right. Um, when I play in person, I almost never, ever, ever use a grid system in play. Right. But when I play online, it's that's all I use. So what do you prefer, grid system or no? I mean, if you're playing, say, in person at a table, would you like to use minis and pawns and tokens or whatever i'm know. honestly I, it doesn't matter to me okay um as a dm i don't right um unless if it's a set piece battle like if it's like a really important boss right. fight or a, a set piece battle basically right yeah that makes sense um in roll20.net though everything is done on a i do everything on a on a grid right because i have all the pawns and the tokens and i've paid for all that stuff all right well i think it at least my experience is playing online is if you don't really want to wait for when someone's just trying to describe what they're doing 
you don't want to wait for them to describe the feet and you can just do that with that that takes away a lot of the narrative and then they can use the narrative for something more important like the action instead of yeah i'm gonna run 30 feet this way and then 10 feet this way and as a dm you're trying to uh, yeah and the nice thing too is it has like a fog of war and like right. the tools and i'm not just trying to sell roll 20 here this is just the experience that i have yeah no wait uh, fantasy grounds the same way and it, that pretty much the same basic system I mean, we can go over the pros and cons of the two systems, and there's definitely some differences between the two, but same thing you're saying, it pretty much goes for a lot of the other systems out there. And Tailspire is another one, too, yep. that um, is a kind of up and coming in the... Yep. Tailspire, uh, the Tabletop Simulator is more of a generic one. Tabletop Simulator? But it has a lot of stuff that, out there. Tabletop Simulator, the nice thing about that is it covers board games. Yeah. It, it, yeah, like all of them. Like every single board game ever made. If, Pretty if, much. If there's a board game that people like, people have either already made it. it, it sorry, it's either for sale for Tabletop Simulator yep. or someone has modded it. Yeah. I've seen people that have modded, they have bridge clubs. Yeah. It's crazy. Bridge is not an easy game to, <coughs> no. to program. No, it's, it's, it's absolutely insane. The virtual, I, I'm not trying to get you off the subject, but the, yeah, with Tabletop Simulator... Watch my my daughter, and she's played everything from Gloomhaven to any of the more obscure indie games I have in the store. I mean, she plays Gaslands on there. They yeah. have Gasland maps and they have cars and yeah. all the stuff already there, just ready to go. Also, keep posted. There will be a Gaslands podcast eventually. Oh yeah, definitely going to be going back to Gaslands. We had done one earlier, but it kind of puked and not, I got not, dumb. Not to get off topic, but no, yeah, I mean, just podcast. We can talk about whatever we want, That's right? right. But yes, the, there, there are cons though. Yep, I would definitely say there are caveats. Um, the biggest thing is retaining player attention. Yeah, um, it's you know because if I could have YouTube up and play <laughs> well, D at the same time, sometimes it's hard to get people to focus a little yeah. bit. Yeah, but that's just that's up to your players. You just that's something you got to talk about when you're playing. Right. What we do is we actually use webcams because then you can see who's focused and who's not. <laughs> right. You can um, see who's sitting in their underwear and who's not. Damn yeah. it, Bob, quit being in your underwear. Yeah. Or Bill or Joe or whoever. I'm yeah. not trying to pick on anyone but, uh, specific. That's the main caveat. And then the other thing that's like... The other caveat is, is that there's not a space that's set aside for it. Because it's kind of nice to be able to go somewhere and play. Right. Um, be at somebody's house or a game store. Um, it's kind of nice to get out, it yeah. feels like. Yeah, well, and then human interaction, social interaction person to person yeah it, it's something you just can't simulate in real virtual worlds or anything like that you can yeah. try but i don't know if it'll ever have the same overall experience but it is a good filler i, I mean i've got to play with my buddies and he lives two thousand miles from here you know i could, yeah. i was living in guam and i literally we didn't have roll 20 or any of the fancy stuff back then but we had messenger and I, icq and there's other chat programs we could yeah. use we literally could use those to game. Mm -hmm. That was just freaking awesome. Yeah. Like, you just... Yeah. And forum games, a lot of... I mean, that used, that's a way older school yep. way of doing forum it. Forum game, but, yep, yeah. But forum yep. gaming was a big thing where you describe what you're doing. And... Yeah. play. Yeah, it used to be called play by... So you go way back. And I know this is <laughs> kind of getting off subject here, but the first time I did something similar to virtual tabletop was play by mail. Okay. So you literally had write out what you were doing, or use a typewriter, yeah. and you'd mail it to the guy, right, to the DM, and then he would send it back. You always send a self-addressed stamped envelope so he didn't have to pay for all the postage both ways. Yeah. And he would send back, after a week, everybody else's stuff of what they did. And he'd, he'd create, like, a book out of it for you. And then he'd, well, what's your response to all this? Then you'd send in your typed out That's response. Cool. That was crazy. And it would take months to get anything done. Yeah. But it was really cool. My first experience was a guy who was just a fantastic... I'm sure he wrote books, and I probably even listened to the books that we did. And I did just hasn't clicked yet. Yeah. But I'm guessing some of the authors out there that are big names, that's probably how they all got started. Well, there's a lot of authors that did that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's kind of... Yeah, play by email, and then it went to the forums, and then bulletin, well, bulletin board systems first, and then they had forums inside those. And then it went to the, I don't remember all the, like, I don't want to say 4chan, but, uh, what, uh, Earth? No. 
IRC. IRC. Yeah, IRC. Yep. Yeah, IRC chats. Yeah, and then yeah, and then just kind of expanded from there yeah. into this virtual tabletop world now. Yeah, which is pretty. And with the advent cool. of it becoming more popular, right? It, it just the market for it got bigger. Well, um, with the virtual tabletop, and I'm not like I I prefer in person myself over that any day, but I like the idea that if you, for instance, decided that. Man, I just don't want to work this job I'm working anymore. I got to, you know, stop. You literally, with Virtual Tabletop now, you can literally sign up to be a professional dungeon master. Yeah. And get paid. You charge whatever you want. Yep. And there's people buying these outrageous... I mean, I was looking at some of them. There was like a guy getting paid like $200 a session yeah. from his players. Like, and he could have 10, 15, 20 players, whatever he wanted. It didn't matter. You know, obviously, I think the guy had, I think he limited his sessions to four or five players, but $200 a session. Yeah. Like, wow. That's a pretty good living if you're doing that four or five nights a week. Yeah. Like, that's $1,000 a night. Yeah. And you're paying for it with virtual tabletop. Literally, you're paying more than you would if you're in person, in my, one of my opinions. So you're paying a little more for the pro, at least the DM is. Because if the DM buys all the books and all that stuff, he can just access. I, I don't think know, buying a house is pretty expensive. Yeah, but playing in a game shop isn't That's usually true. unless they have table fees, which game shops now are which pushing. Really if you're hard. a game shop, have a table fee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's a good way to make money because you know you charge five bucks a seat. Most gamers aren't even going to flinch at that. Ten bucks a seat, most aren't going to care either. Yeah, because they don't have to. They know where they're going to find their group. Yeah. There's a, there's a game store that does it in uh, the town that I lived in before, and uh, they didn't have table fees. Right. And I told them they should. <laughs> yeah. Like, they should definitely have table fees. Oh, what fees. are their table fees? They don't have them. They don't have them yet? Um, but they do have like a, a tip jar for the DMs. Okay. And then all the DMs just agree that, like, just give it to the store. Like, right. Yeah, I, I, I don't have table fees in, our, in my store, but I do do membership, which I'd say anybody who comes in here and plays that can comfortably afford my my, my membership fee pays it without even question. Lots don't pay a lot more, and they do that through the vending or through overpaying a product. They're just like, oh, here, this is 12 bucks. Well, I got a 50. Here you go. Just keep it. You yeah. know, I get a lot of that, and I think... A lot of that's because they know they can come here and play whatever they want. Like, yeah, and, and that's the beauty of having a, a brick and mortar thing too. Right. Is like if I get off of work, I can go to the brick and mortar shop and hang out and kind of be in. I hear so many guys say that you know the game store is their their getaway. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's the getaway. For, it's between the home life and the work life. And it's that space that you don't have responsibilities in. Yep. And that's, that's what, you know, the, the other big pro, not to jump the gun or change subjects, but rolling dice. Yeah. Like, it's... it's Very I, satisfying. I have... I will say that I like them both the same, the virtual and the tabletop game, but the thing I miss most is rolling that physical dice. Right. Um... Getting that one or that critical, and everybody yeah. at the table is like, "Oh, yeah." You don't you you don't get that as much over. You, you do, but it's just it's not as. It's like watching. Okay, this is a good analogy. We've talked. I've talked about this with people in the past, and so you're really getting an intense moment in an RPG, and you know you're. It's a critical moment. You roll that twenty. Everybody at the table cheers. That is the same thing as sitting at home. By yourself watching a football game and watching your favorite team score for yeah, a touchdown. It is. You're happy, and there might be other people in the room that are happy, but when you're at the stadium and it's, it happens, it's a, it's a whole, whole different another, experience. Yeah, yeah. And same thing kind of with this, is if you've got a group of players that are so excited, you know, and they're just going, and everybody in the room is just like, oh, it's just... The, the, it all of a sudden everything just goes. Yeah, the room, the room goes quiet, and everyone's waiting for that roll. Right. And and just, it's, it's usually, in my case, it's an ah, oh, ah. Oh, it's like, oh crap! How would I do that? Yeah. Dang it! Oh well. But uh, so yeah, yeah, we're definitely. This is not really off subject, so 
we're doing good, I think. The tabletop simulator versus, or not table, virtual tabletop versus in person. I think we're covering quite good ground. Yeah, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I, like, in recap, try them. Yeah. Like, if, 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 it, if it's something that, you know, there's a lot of DMs out there, and I know this for a fact, or a lot of people out there that want to run D&D, but they don't have the group of people to right. play with. Yep. And that's where your virtual tabletop as well is super nice. Because you can get, if you want to DM, you can get all the players in the world easy. Oh, yeah. You, you will have the cho- your choice of players. Right. Um. Yeah, a good, a good a good comparison would be if you're playing in an MMO. I don't know how many MMOs you played, but I played a lot. Not a big one. If you play in an MMO and you're say DPS, that's for all my gamer video gamer nerds out there. It's hard as heck to get into a group. It's terrible. But if you're a tank, or AKA the DM, you can get to any group in the world. You're the guy leading the group everywhere. That's kind of how I look at D and D. Is if I'm the tank, I have players will DPS guys lining up to be play with me all day long, like no limit to them. They'll just keep coming. So, I guess that's kind of how I would, that's how I look at it when I'm thinking, how am I going to get more players? Oh, I'll just be a DM, and all of a sudden, all my players will just show up. Yep. Same thing in a video game. I, how do I get more players to run through this dungeon with me? I'll just be a tank or yeah, a dealer. Play, play the class that no one wants to play. And all of a sudden, everybody in the world lines up behind you. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, I think everyone should try it. Absolutely. I, th- I think you might find that you, you like it a lot. I um, mean, it might reconnect you with some people that you might not have been able to play with otherwise. Yeah, and make new friends like Dave. <laughs> that was from another podcast, that's by a, the way. That's a flashback from that. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's from another podcast, but you never know when you're going to meet that person or, you know, in my case, you never know when you're going to meet your wife or your significant other or your husband or boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever you want to call it, them. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, so I guess that was a that was a fun little subject, virtual tabletop versus in-person overall. I I prefer tabletop, I guess, if I play, fan, you know, play the virtual. I use a, I should I should mention I use a lot of the virtual tabletop in my game sessions when I'm sitting here with my players. I don't necessarily like having a computer at my table and it kind of annoys me to have it, but I can throw maps up on my screen. Yeah. I can do all this stuff. I have quick reference. I still have all the books, but sometimes looking through say fifth that has, you know, 30 books or whatever it is now. And then anything extra you purchased, it's kind of a pain in the butt to try and find it. The other small shout out I want to run. Just... Yep. On the side here before we wrap up this D and D Beyond. Oh, um, if you're a D and D player and you don't know what D and D Beyond is, shame on you. Shame on you. Yeah. Uh, well, not really shame on you, but no. check it out because right. it will make your life as a DM, as a player, as a person who's alive. Right. Right. A million times easier. Yes. Yeah, and it turns out there's uh, pretty much all game systems have something cl- not that detailed. They do have fairly similar. Pathfinder has its own thing. Yeah. I mean, I just found out today there's a guy who makes stuff for Cyberpunk. The Cyberpunk. Right? <laughs> I mean, yeah. He was all excited about it. because, yeah. And I know there's stuff out there for Star Wars, uh, for Fantasy Flight Star Wars. Um, yeah. yeah, you should check out check it out. It, I, if for nothing else, it's just a really good companion. Yeah. And, you know, you got quick searches and easy searches and quick rulings. You can look up rules so, so quick. Yeah, and if you're a game creator... Put that code in your book, please. Yeah. <laughs> that if yes. I bought the physical book, I yes. get the copy on yes. the PDF. Yes, please do so. That's a big gripe of the... I know that's a huge gripe for the gamers that buy hardcovers. Because everybody wants to have the hardcovers that look nice on the shelves and you can look through them. And you know, when you're by yourself, it's nice to look through the hardcover. You know what company does that that you wouldn't expect? GW. Games Oh, jeez. The, I didn't the, know they did the, that. The biggest, meanest, and ugliest of all the companies. I think Pathfinder does too, don't they? Yeah, I, I don't know. Path, whatever. We're not close it. Anyways, yeah, that's uh, that's this week's podcast. All right, thank you for tuning in. Have a good night.